Hey guys, just bringing you a second video today. I know it's rather late, however, I wanted to bring you this information as soon as I could. So I've just found out that Mod Wraith has posted a lot of posts on the 1st of June on the newly opened Combat Rework forums. And so I've searched this username and you can find all his posts. So as you can see, he's only actually posted on the 1st of June on these combat on this in this combat discussion forum and he's posted a lot of interesting information that I think was previously unreleased a lot of this we didn't really know so I'm just gonna go through them and basically sum up everything that he said and there's quite a lot so I'm just gonna start from the bottom and go through so obviously if you've seen the behind the scenes video you see that guy was holding a dragon defender in his right hand and he was just saying that that was just a graphics glitch type thing that they were doing on their test on their testing like on their testing server and it was just like a mistake and they also said he also talked about how you can't actually in-game change hands with what you want to wear and like dual wield possibly, you know, that sort of thing. And he was saying it's all down to the whip. Because of the whip movement action, you need more movement in your right arm. And currently the left arm doesn't have that movement and only the right arm does. So basically all weapons have to go in the right arm because the whip has to. Because it wouldn't make sense for other weapons to go in your left hand and whip too. And pretty much he said that <clears throat> he's asked for it to be changed so that he could actually change which weapon. He wanted like a good animation system basically, as he said here. He said he just gets laughed at when he asks. Don't ask me why, but yep, yeah, that's what he's pretty much just said. Anyway, to move on to the next post, which he's had about the specs. This is quite a lot of information on this page. As you can see, there's lots of posts. Go on for quite a while, so it's going to take me a little while to go over these ones. So basically, his first post is just basically saying special attacks are being removed from all weapons, and basically the new action bar will have all your special attacks on, and will have all your, it will have the majority of all the old special attacks that you can currently do in game on it. So he's basically saying like, he also mentions the fact that God Swords, you know how the God Swords obviously have their special attacks. Basically, what's this? Basically, he's saying that um, they will have their stats dramatically improved. It says reworks that the current powerful weapons like Godzords make up for the loss of the special attack by having badass stats. So if you're worried about the Godzords crashing in price, because obviously if the specials are being removed, they're going to be cosmetic in terms of differences. So AGS will be the same as a BGS. Maybe it'll improve the price of the BGS or possibly it's going to crash the AGS. Who knows what will happen, but it's going to make them approximately the same for all of them. I assume, however, I imagine BGS will still be the most common one, obviously, because everyone does benders. But maybe it'll Im maybe it'll improve the price if these stats are good, because obviously they're improving the stats. Maybe that'll make a difference. But he also says two-handed weapons don't suck the big one on the new combat system. So obviously, if you look now, all your best weapons are like rapiers, fast weapons, and if you compare it to like a rune two H or any of the big other other two-hand weapons, like I've seen more, it might have a high max here. It might be good for some things, but it's not good in general. And he's basically saying they're going to make up for that by giving them bigger stats. The next post is saying, like, in regards to trying to bust out a Dragon Claw special with a Maul, he's saying that the new abilities have certain weapon requirements. And he basically is saying that you can only do, like, certain special attacks with certain weapons. So, example, if you've got a 2H, if you've got a 2H weapon, you might be able to do a small spec, or if you've got, um... A, s a small special you can't like pull out an AGS spec and he says here like basically like you can't do an AGS spec with claws and this sparked a thing like aren't claws a two handed weapon why not and he's basically saying he says later on that here that claws are a pain because they are two handed items but they, sh they kind of shouldn't be he's saying that there's a small weapon so they can't use the AGS ability so there's obviously going to be something added that also is like small and big weapons and I kind of understand because obviously you can't like pull out an AGS spec with claws because claws are completely different to a big sword. And you, you've seen the AGS spec, you like jump in the air, spin around, thrusting your sword upwards. And there's no way you can do that with claws obviously. You probably could but it's not going to do the same effect as like an AGS spec. And basically it says you unlock the new abilities by leveling your combat skills. So it's not going to be based off the weapon, it's going to literally be based off your attack, of your skill levels. So I, think I, I prefer that because it means everyone can use certain special attacks, I guess, as long as you've got any two-handed weapon. Seems seems um, logical. Should be pretty awesome. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a complete difference. Obviously, one of the main things with this combat rework I'm worried about is like the prices of items. Because obviously, they're on about changing the stats of all items, and I'm worried like Pernix might not be useful. Torva might not be useful, and Vertus and things. I'm hoping it's the other way around, and they actually become more useful. Because at the minute, like... Torva's not too useful, and so is Virtus. Virtus is pretty much pointless because the extra mage boost isn't too great, and considering you can go to Glacios and Mage and Bandos and still hit pretty good, is obviously the problem. 
He also then he says you will un you'll have the same levels in the live game as in the beta. So if you didn't realise that, obviously we didn't actually know that. But in the beta, you're not going to have like a Gmail account where you can have everything. You basically you're going to be on your regular account so that you can test what you can do. And he says obviously you have the ability to unlock them from the start of the beta if you've already got all 99s, pretty, pretty much. He says the free he says the free to play game will have access to the action bar, but only some of the abilities rather than all. He says the barrow sets and the void set will all be retained in the similar ways that they currently are. Uh, one interesting thing here is the fact that special restore parts will still be useful because obviously special is completely going to be changed because you're going to be doing it after action bar. And he says. Obviously, it's going to work differently because you don't have a special attack bar. And he says, not sure if we're revealing that yet. It's all quite interesting because it's going to affect combat tactics everywhere you go. Even if you think of Nex, we've got probably Nex down to pretty much a T right now. You close back on certain phases on purpose. But it's going to be completely changed. A new special attack system is going to change everything. Every boss in this game is going to have new tactics. And it's going to be awesome because it's going to be loads of new bosses coming into the game. People are going to have to figure out new tactics. Because next, you're not going to be able to close spec, possibly then. You might, have to, you might be better to use a different spec. Who knows what's going to happen. But also the other interesting thing to note here is that Mod Mark said they're keen on giving abilities as a reward for future Grand Master quests. So if you think like ROTM, you unlock like Storm of Armadil and things like that. And other ones like you unlock claws from um, Wild Gothic Sleeps. So obviously it's that sort of thing that always unlock pretty cool stuff for doing Grandmaster quests. But anyway, to go on to the next post, um, it's saying that the barrow sets will still go off every now and then, like automatically and not triggered from your action bar. And he also says that auto attacks, basically auto attacks are what we use now. So basically if you go and attack something and you sit there meleeing it, that's what you do, that's what you'll do automatically when you click an NPC. And then your action bars, you'll click during the fight. Obviously, I think they're talking about keyboard shortcuts, so you'll be hitting your keyboard to do certain actions while you're fighting. And it all sounds pretty awesome. He also says that this is pretty, this is a pretty interesting thing, is that the, ex, the enhanced Excalibur special will be removed. So basically, that's a very useful item at the minute. Because a lot of people use it to heal the Overload. If you think of Overload doing your 500 damage, then you heal your EA, use your EA to heal that, pretty much all of it, obviously over time. But he says that the EE, obviously being a road from the CS Diary, will have much better stats on it. So possibly it'll be a decent weapon. However, I don't think so. Obviously, who's going to use an EE when you can have Chaotix and things? It all depends, but I can't imagine an EE is just going to suddenly be made amazing. It's going to be... I have, it's pretty much going to be useless, and you know that. No matter how much they increase the stats, they can't make it higher than, like, Chaotix and things. So, it's going to be pretty much useless, I imagine. Doubt there's anything they can do about that. But he also says that the E special will kind of replaced through Constitution and Defense abilities on your action bar, and will have a lot of healing in different ways, and he also says one of them will be a heal over time, like the E special. So there's lots of cool things. He also says there's new abilities are not prohibited in PvP, so you might think, holy shit, this is going to ki just kill people. But there's obviously, there's also defense abilities, and this is something that could affect Pyrrhus dramatically, because you're going to have defense abilities unlocked that negate damage. He mentions that one defense ability stop makes the next ability used against you heal you instead of harm you, as he says right here. So, he says, basically, if you think, like, the enemies are better unleash a big attack, so... Just, if you think about now, you think some guy's gonna use an AGS spec on you, you venge, or... You do something else, whatever you do, I'm not, obviously, I'm not obviously no pro PK, but... You know what I mean, you, you anticipate that special, and you get prepared for it, you eat up, or you venge, or whatever you want to do. Because you prepare for it, it's gonna be very similar to that, using that. And he also mentions uh, something that... Was probably hint was not really hinted at, but something that's quite obvious, everything's going to have a recharge time. And that's possibly might, possibly what Special Recovers might do. And he says it's an un a feature that he hasn't mentioned yet, but he's kind of mentioned it here, so maybe not. But Special Recovers could cover um, recover your recharge times, possibly, who knows. But then I imagine they're going to do something special. The next thing is basically... Oh, he mentions the same thing that the recover special things. The special attack bar is going to be repurposed to affect a new feature which he haven't announced yet. And then he mentions the initial plan was September. So I think that means when the beta is going to end. So we're going to expect quite a really late release, I imagine, if the beta ends in September. But he says they may extend it longer depending on feedback. So I think they were originally heading for a late summer ending. 
um, a late summer release of this combat rework. However, I think it's going to be a bit later if the beta only ends on September. So we might be looking at end of the year. If se I think September's the ninth month, isn't it? So it could be a couple of months after that. We're going to have to wait and see what happens. Anyway, the next one is just a short post about Slayer. And he pretty much says that... I'll just wait for it to load what's going on here. Right, so as you can see, he just says, from our initial testing, Slayer will be faster in the new combat re in the new combat system, and to, to stop that, they're going to adjust the Slayer XP given per monster to bring it in line with the current XP rates. So they don't want it to be improved, so they are going to change the XP rates. Um, let's see what this one is. Zorvan's test mission. Right, so yeah, here he's just confirming something that we've already known, that you're going to be able to use the new action buffer skilling. So you can drag anything on it, so he says you can put high alk on it, just hit a key to cast it, and then click on the item you wish to alk. So if you think of alking now, it's probably quite tedious, but now you're just going to be able to hit one click, one click, one click, and so on. It sounds pretty cool. It's going to make skilling a lot easier, I imagine, which is possibly a good thing. He also says that you can put logs on the bar and press one to open the craft menu, for example. So that's pretty awesome because it's just going to make something more, a lot of things more easy. Because if you think training now in game is all about using the interface to your advantage, using them logs, clicking your logs quickly in your inventory to speed up. But yeah, that's the sort of thing. So he's pretty much saying here again something that we already know. If you use your abilities on the action bar, training will be faster. And if you don't, you'll be AFK training like before you'll get slower XP, that's pretty much all he says. Now, this po this thread is very interesting. This is something that, obviously, it's for something for the future, but it, this is going to be very awesome, I imagine. It's going to basically bring rules to RuneScape uh, in different places. So basically saying, tanking will be a fo fully supported playstyle in the new combat system, with lots of extra life points for tanks and abilities that they can use to force NPCs to tank them and not their friends. You can also put debuffs on PvP targets so that they do less damage to other players if they do not attack you. So basically in PvP you can cast abilities on other t on other people if they're attacking other people so that you can stop them from hurting your friends sort of thing if you're like the tank. He also says pewers will not be outlawed but you'll be at a disadvantage sort of thing. So there's probably going to be some way to make a pure that's still decent but it's going to be a major disadvantage if you don't train your defense and you're going to have to train your defense in somehow so it might be something different but he basically says someone with 99 attack and strength and 1 defense will almost certainly get steamrolled by someone with 50 defense and I see if the 50 defense means the same combat level but yeah so it's definitely pures that will definitely be affected majorly in this game with this rework and then the next thing he says that they want to release something huge in the future now this to me sounds freaking awesome. Now what he's saying is we hope to release big giant huge bosses. So come on, if QBD isn't a big giant huge boss then I don't know what is. But anyway he says that proper teamwork, it takes proper teamwork and party rules to take down. Further down the line these bosses haven't been designed yet though. We now are we, for now we are focusing on getting the combat rework done. And that once down the live service we can think of new cool bosses to create. So what's awesome about this is like, if you think back to the release of Bandos, if you think we had tanks, you had people in Guffins that would sit and not attack the boss, but sit on Guffins on the on the mage minion and heal off it. Now that was pretty awesome. It was definitely, it was a very intelligent way to do it. Because he'd been Guffins, which is pretty good defensive armor, and he'd be healing. And he wouldn't be attacking the boss, he'd be attacking the minion, which has lower defense so that he could heal more often. Which is going to save him food, and overall going to help the team out a lot. Which is a very intelligent way. So basically he's saying they like that sort of thing, and they're, they're going to add like fully supported tanking and other rules possibly that's good that's gonna be really awesome and that's something i'm really looking forward to if that's something that happens especially these big huge bosses so they're definitely planning on bigger bosses and bosses if you've got to surely if you've got to take a boss down in rules it's gonna be very tough isn't it it's gonna be a very tough monster to kill it's gonna take teams it's gonna take major planning and tactics so that's gonna be all awesome and hopefully they'll have some awesome drops i'm really looking forward to them and that should be something really fun to look forward to if you think you're next Next at the minute, obviously everyone does effectively the same, but it's all going to be pretty awesome. And next is a pretty tough boss. QBD is a fun boss. I really like the QBD. It's different to anything else. Like, you're evading attacks. You're running around. It takes proper concentration. Like if you look at Bandos, if you go there and full Torvald Divide, it's AFK. It's ridiculous. But, yeah, it's always going to happen with all bosses. I mean, next is never going to be AFK because of just simply the way it works. But, it's going to, you know, if they release higher gears, it's going to get easier. Anyway, this says... 
Now he says about new armors that they want to release more in the future, but originally they're going to be through drops, like from boss drops, but in the future he wants to make them from skilling. So basically like actually using your high level skills. Wow, did I just whistle when I was talking? Holy shit. And basically they want it to be so that you can actually, your 99 crafting has a use, your 99 smithing has a use. Because at the minute they don't really, and that'd be something I really want to see, because I obviously I'm max. I want skills to have a use. I want to have 99 smithing for a reason, and I want other players to be encouraged to skill to high levels without just getting a cape, and that's the only reason they want it. So the next thing you're saying is on a thread called "Get rid of prodding." So if you don't know what prodding is, it's kind of like if you go to the PK worlds and you use a karasi and you just sit there and hope for a good spec. That is pretty much prodding, because as he said, it's all he mentions lucky specials, and he says with this, with your new huge amount of life points it's going to be impossible to just get a lucky special. It says, I in fact mean a big giant truck full of life points. So we're certainly going to have huge life points compared to now. And fights aren't going to be over quickly. Which begs the question, can you KO? If you think in the world now, everyone hates people who heal over a certain HP. It's like, if you can't one hit someone and you heal, it's safer, safer. Because it just stops people, it stops people comboing. Now that's something that I'm... Um, thinking about really but I'm not too bothered about PvP but it's gonna make it surely it's gonna make it impossible to combo someone and that's how basically fights work at the minute and if it's not impossible to clear with someone then surely they can just teleport a lower HP I'm sure teleporting will definitely stop if this is the case but I imagine PKS will not be pleased with this update it's gonna affect them a lot it's gonna change the way PKing works completely and people that are good at PKing now might not be good in the future anyway the next post is about combat rules healing, so as I just mentioned we're talking about tanking and now someone is mentioning about healing. So if you think of Bobby and Assault, that is a very good idea of like combat rules. So you got a defender, attacker, um, healer, what else? Uh, I've done a guide on this, I should know. But yeah, you know the other ones, collector and defender. Did I mention defender? I don't know, but you know what I mean, them sort of things. And so he's talking about this, he's talking about the party rules, I mean the traditional rules of tanking, range DPS and melee DPS. So he obviously range DPS includes magic DPS I assume there. And he's, he mentions the fact that this is true that they're missing the healer rule. Now, he said he had talked about a healing class, but he said it would affect too much on like current skills like fishing and cooking. Because it would negate the use of food and possibly other things. And then he says he wants the healer class to kind of be filled by summoning familiars. So like the skin weavers from Dungeoneering. So if you think of also like obviously you got your unicorn, any other healing familiars, bunyips, they all count as like a healer rule. They're healing you while you're fighting. You do not you're you do not miss a move of fighting. So if you think if you use a unicorn spec, it does not slow down your attacking of the boss sort of thing, if you get what I mean. You can still use a rapier while you're healing with your unicorn. That's what's so great about them. So effectively that is kind of that thing. So I do get the idea. But he says there's got he says that we haven't got any multiplayer boss fights designed around the new party rule system yet, so who knows what we may come up with in the future. So he's basically saying anything's possible kind of thing. It's all pretty interesting reading this. I definitely had a good read reading all this. And you can easily find this by searching Mod Rafe on search users on the forums. You must log in, I think, to find it. Uh, comp crossbow is now two-handed. So this is something that's quite interesting. Now... Basically, he's saying they will be releasing crossbows that are two-handed. However, the ones in game currently will remain one-handed. And basically, he says two-handed crossbows will be like two-edged swords. And like basically, what they'll be is like powerful. Like two-edged swords are more powerful, but they hit slower. So it's kind of like they're meant to be sort of thing. I think they're meant to be like similar DPS, but they hit higher but slower. That's the sort of thing they're going for. And I imagine that's what it'll be. This, this thread's pretty pointless, he's just saying that this is not RuneScape 3, it will still be RuneScape 2. Or just RuneScape, as it's known. This one is basically saying something that I think I've already mentioned on this, on this channel, is that you can train any any style. Like, you can use um, attack style, so at the minute, obviously, you've got stab, slash, and, like, other ones. Like, your top left one might be attack, your top right one is strength, and your bottom right one is defense, sort of thing, to train. Now, basically saying you'll be able to do any ability for any skill you want. So you'll be able to select whether you want to train strength, select whether you want to train defense, or whatever, and it won't matter what you use. He says Slayer XP will still be based on the target's life points. Um, and this is the interesting thing that I didn't really think would happen, is that also training mage, you might want to train just defense now if you wish. So if you think now, you can use mage and train mage and defense. 
can also get some defense XP because it is kind of defensive because you're re doing it from distance. You can also train re defensive range, I think. Not 100% sure on that one. But obviously this is something that will be added so that you can train just defense and that's pretty awesome if you want to do that. I'm not sure why anyone would use mage and train defense but it's awesome that they just have that ability there. Just adding new things that weren't there before is pretty awesome because I like the idea because at the minute everyone trains strength because they have the best things. If you think in dungeoneering everyone uses strength because you want to use your berserker ring. That's the sort of thing. I mean everyone has higher strength XP. Very few train attack and defense. He also mentions about magic that the existing magic spells will still unlock at the exact same level and won't be changed. But he says that monsters will indeed be weaker to some elements. So if you think of like just some of the discussions on the Rune Shark channel like saying that why is fire the strongest and air the weakest? Why shouldn't it be strongest against other things? Obviously, like you've got ice strike worms and glaciers where fire spells do double damage, and I, I love that. It's pretty awesome because obviously, like ice creatures, fire should do double damage. But why is there not fire creatures that water should do double damage? Look at tormented demons; they have like fire and shit. Why isn't water spells doing double damage? That's the sort of thing that they're gonna go for. Like fire elementals, water spells do double damage. I imagine earth creatures will obviously get probably owned by air. I imagine I'm not 100% sure. Who knows what air could own? Probably nothing. It's pretty shit, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, he says basically here as well, you're going to get lots of new range and mage armor, so that's going to be pretty awesome. So obviously when we see the beta, we, uh, the beta servers, if we'll see this new gear, who knows? But it'll be definitely be awesome to see all the new gear before it comes into the game, and you'll know automatically, long before it comes into the game, what you actually need to do, what gears you want, etc, etc. So it's all going to be like pre-planning, you're going to know what you want to do and go to the G straight away. He, also, he says here there'll not be a new skill, that's already knowledge we already knew. Agility is a combat factor, this is pretty interesting. Because if you imagine a combat, you're like running around, you're fringing your sword around, you're avoiding attacks, you're like ducking to ducking under sword swipes, whatever you know, you just imagine combat, and that's pretty much what's going on. And he says that they did discuss this, but they thought it would be unfair to add it now. Basically, it says, he's basically saying like something, if it was there from the start, that'd be great, but it's not. Basically, they want people that have 99 agility now not to be advantaged over people that didn't train it because they didn't care about it before. Because obviously someone might be 20 agility. It didn't really impact on combat. Why would they want to train it if they just want to do combat? That's the sort of thing. They don't want to force people to get 99 now. This is something that's very interesting. Like, I can't imagine this looking good. This is something, like, basically, he's going out of how bows are two-handed. He's on about shield bow. So it's going to be like a duel between a shield and a bow. So like you're going to have your shield and it's going to have like a shield in front of it type of thing. Not imagine, I'm not too sure how it'll work. However, basically it's going to basically so that you're going to have a bow that has defense stats. And the main purpose is so that you can fill the tank rule as previously mentioned. So that you can take tank the damage of like a boss or an enemy. And you'll still be able to use a bow if you wish to use that. So like if it's your favorite weapon as he mentions. It's funny that he, Mon Reef, actually speaks with American's English, English spelling, which is quite, that's quite weird. Is he actually American? I don't know. But the last thread is just something about beta. He's basically saying you will still be able to play on the regular worlds, and beta servers will be separate worlds. So you'll go in your world list, and betas will be at the, like, like at the bottom, like World 300 or something like that. You get the idea. Anyway, that's all I want to say in this video. I hope you found this discussion little, a little bit interesting. It's released some pretty cool information that I'm definitely looking forward to. And we'll all see this on the beta servers on the 26th of June. Definitely waiting for it. And I'll release any more information about the combat rework that I find out in the future for you guys. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you tomorrow for another video.